Ode on the Death of the Duke of Wellington by Alfred Lord Tennyson Read by Arthur Elwood Bury the great duke with an empire's lamentation. Let us bury the great duke to the noise of the mourning of a mighty nation. Mourning when their leaders fall, warriors carry the warrior's pall, and sorrow darkens hamlet and hall. Where shall we lay the man whom we deplore? Here, in streaming London's central roar, let the sound of those he wrought for, and the feet of those he fought for, echo round his bones for evermore. Lead out the pageant, sad and slow, as fits an universal woe. Let the long, long procession go, and let the sorrowing crowd about it grow, and let the mournful martial music blow. The last great Englishman is low. Mourn, for to us he seems the last, Remembering all his greatness in the past. No more in soldier fashion will he greet, With lifted hand the gazer in the street. O oh, friends, our chief state oracle is mute. Mourn for the man of long-enduring blood, the statesman warrior, moderate, resolute, whole in himself, a common good. Mourn for the man of amplest influence, yet clearest of ambitious crime, our greatest yet with least pretense. Great in council and great in war, foremost captain of his time, rich in saving common sense, and as the greatest only are, in his simplicity sublime. O good grey head which all men knew, O voice from which their omens all men drew, O iron nerve to true occasion true, O fallen at length that tower of strength which stood forth square to all the winds that blew, such was he whom we deplore, the long self-sacrifice of life is o'er, the great world victor's victor will be seen no more. All is over and done. Render thanks to the giver, England, for thy son. Let the bell be tolled. Render thanks to the giver and render him to the mould. Under the cross of gold that shines over city and river, there he shall rest for ever among the wise and the bold. Let the bell be tolled, and a reverent people behold the towering car, the sable steeds. Bright let it be with its blazoned deeds, dark, in its funeral fold. Let the bell be tolled, and a deeper knell in the heart be knolled, and the sound of the sorrowing anthem rolled through the dome of the golden cross, and the volleying cannon thunder his loss. He knew their voices of old, for many a time in many a clime his captain's ear has heard them boom, Bellowing victory, bellowing doom. When he with those deep voices wrought, Guarding realms and kings from shame, With those deep voices our dead captain taught The tyrant, and asserts his claim, In that dread sound to the great name, Which he has worn so pure of blame, In praise and in dispraise the same, A man of well-attempered frame. O oh, civic muse, to such a name, to such a name for ages long, to such a name preserve a broad approach of fame and ever echoing avenues of song. Who is he that cometh like an honoured guest with banner and with music, with soldier 
and with priest, with a nation weeping and breaking on my rest. Mighty seaman, this is he, was great by land as thou by sea. Thine island loves thee well, thou famous man, the greatest sailor since our world began. Now to the roll of muffled drums, to thee the greatest soldier comes. For this is he, was great by land as thou by sea. His foes were thine, he kept us free. O oh, give him welcome. This is he, worthy of our gorgeous rites, and worthy to be laid by thee. For this is England's greatest son, he that gained a hundred fights, nor ever lost an English gun. This is he that far away, against the myriads of assay, clashed with his fiery few and won. And underneath another sun, warring on a later day, Round a frighted Lisbon drew the treble works, the vast designs of his laboured rampart lines, when he greatly stood at bay, whence he issued forth anew, and ever great and greater grew, beating from the wasted vines back to France her banded swarms, back to France with countless blows, till o'er the hills her eagles flew beyond the Pyrenean pines, followed up in valley and glen, with blare of bugle, clamour of men, roll of cannon and clash of arms, and England pouring on her foes. Such a war had such a close. Again their ravening eagle rose in anger, wheeled on Europe shadowing wings, and barking for the thrones of kings till one that sought but duty's iron crown, on that loud Sabbath shook the spoiler down, a day of onsets of despair, dashed on every rocky square, their surging charges foamed themselves away. Last, the Prussian trumpet blew through the long-tormented air, heaven flashed a sudden jubilant ray, and down we swept, and charged, and overthrew. So great a soldier taught us there what long-enduring hearts could do in that world's earthquake, Waterloo. Mighty seaman, tender and true, and pure as he from taint of craven guile, O saviour of the silver-coasted isle, O shaker of the Baltic and the Nile, if aught of things that here befall touch a spirit among things divine, if love of country move thee there at all, be glad because his bones are laid by thine. And through the centuries... Let a people's voice in full acclaim, a people's voice, the proof and echo of all human fame, a people's voice when they rejoice at civic revel and pomp and game, attest their great commander's claim with honour, 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 honour to him, eternal honour to his name. A people's voice. We are a people yet, though all men else their nobler dreams forget, confused by brainless mobs and lawless powers. Thank him who isled us here, and roughly set his Britain in blown seas and storming showers. We have a voice with which to pay the debt of boundless love and reverence and regret to those great men who fought and kept it ours, and keep it ours, O oh God, from brute control. O oh, statesmen, guard us, guard the eye, the soul of Europe, keep our England whole, and save the one true seed of freedom sown betwixt a people and their ancient throne, that sober freedom out of which there springs our loyal passion for our temperate kings. For saving that, ye help to save mankind, till public wrong be crumbled into dust, 
and drill the raw world for the march of mind, till crowds at length be sane, and crowns be just. But wink no more in slothful overtrust. Remember him who led your hosts. He bade you guard the sacred coasts. Your cannons moulder on the seaward wall. His voice is silent in your council hall forever. And whatever tempests lower forever silent, even if they broke in thunder silent, yet remember all he spoke among you, and the man who spoke, who never sold the truth to serve the hour, nor paltered with eternal God for power, who let the turbid streams of rumour flow through either babbling world of high and low, whose life was work, whose language rife with rugged maxims hewn from life, who never spoke against a foe, whose eighty winters freeze with one rebuke, all great self-seekers trampling on the right. Truth-teller was our England's Alfred named, truth-lover was our English duke, whatever record leap to light. He never shall be shamed. Lo, the leader in these glorious wars, now to glorious burial slowly born, followed by the brave of other lands. He on whom from both her open hands lavish honour showered all her stars, and affluent fortune emptied all her horn. Yea, let all good things await him who cares not to be great, but as he saves or serves the state. Not once or twice in our rough island story, the path of duty was the way to glory. He that walks it, only thirsting for the right, and learns to deaden love of self before his journey closes, he shall find the stubborn thistle bursting into glossy purples which outredden all voluptuous garden roses. Not once or twice in our fair island story, the path of duty was the way to glory. He that ever following her commands, on with toil of heart and knees and hands, through the long gorge to the far light has won his path upward and prevailed, shall find the toppling crags of duty scaled, are close upon the shining tablelands to which our God himself is moon and sun. Such was he. His work is done. But while the races of mankind endure, let his great example stand, colossal, seen of every land, and keep the soldier firm, the statesman pure, till in all lands and through all human story the path of duty be the way to glory. And let the land whose hearths be saved from shame for many and many an age proclaim at civic revel and pomp and game, and when the long illumined cities flame their ever loyal iron leader's fame, with honour, 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 honour to him, eternal honour to his name. Peace, his triumph will be sung by some yet unmoulded tongue, far on in summers that we shall not see. Peace, it is a day of pain, for one about whose patriarchal knee late the little children clung. O oh, peace, it is a day of pain, for one upon whose hand and heart and brain once the weight and fate of Europe hung. Ours the pain, be his the gain. More than is of man's degree must be with us watching here, at this our great solemnity. Whom we see not, we revere, we revere, and we refrain from talk of battles loud and vain, and brawling memories all too free, for such a wise humility as befits a solemn fane. We revere, 
And while we hear the tides of music's golden sea setting toward eternity, uplifted high in heart and hope are we, until we doubt not that for one so true there must be other nobler work to do than when he fought at Waterloo, and victor he must ever be. For though the giant ages heave the hill and break the shore, and evermore make and break and work their will, though world on world in myriad myriads roll round us, each with different powers and other forms of life than ours, what know we greater than the soul? On God and godlike men we build our trust. Hush. The dead march wails in the people's ears. The dark crowd moves, and there are sobs and tears. The black earth yawns, the mortal disappears. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. He is gone who seemed so great, gone, but nothing can bereave him of the force he made his own. Being here, and we believe him, something far advanced in state, and that he wears a truer crown than any wreath that man can weave him. Speak no more of his renown. Lay your earthly fancies down, and in the vast cathedral leave him. God accept him. Christ receive him. Thank you for watching. Oh, please subscribe to the channel for more poetry. And if you want to support my readings, please consider purchasing a copy of my book of original poems. You can find a link in the description below.